Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best, most frightening, and most influential films that perfectly encompass the mood and look of gothic horror. It ought to be burned down, and the ground sword with salt. Number 10, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I mean that, to work with me, you must die to your racing life and be reborn to mine. From the unauthorised silent adaptation, Nosferatu, to Universal's renowned 1931 version, Dracula brought the trappings of gothic horror to the big screen. Over the years, the story had gone through so many incarnations, it had become stale. Francis Ford Coppola's maximalist take revived many of Bram Stoker's most ambitious set pieces and scares. I have crossed oceans of time to find. It also reintroduced the heavily erotic elements of the original novel, which would have been far too graphic for earlier adaptations. With its sumptuous set design and lurid images, straight out of a penny dreadful, Bram Stoker's Dracula injected the romanticism, elegance, and danger back into a well-worn story. That you did not What sweet music like mine. Number nine, Crimson Peak. It is a monstrous love. And it makes monsters of us all. Guillermo del Toro clearly took his inspiration from a lot of the other movies on this list. Crimson Peak is his twisted and diabolical take on stories like Jane Eyre and Rebecca, with a young female protagonist having to reckon with the secrets her new husband is hiding. <laughs> you are monsters! Bother you! Honey. That's the last thing Mother said, too. Like many gothic horror offerings, it's a bombastic and exaggerated melodrama which exploits its historical setting for maximum visual beauty. What Del Toro adds to it is his own streak of grotesque terror. Despite the expensive and artful interiors, his horror is not for the faint of heart. Alive. You lied to me! I did. You poisoned me! You told me you loved me! I do. Number eight. House of Usher. I don't believe in the sins of the, the fathers being visited upon the children. You do not, sir. Through the early 1960s, exploitation maestro Roger Corman made eight Edgar Allan Poe adaptations, with many starring Vincent Price. The first in the series, House of Usher, set the standard for the series. Starring as the heir to the evil and cursed Usher family, Price delivers his character's long and florid monologues with his distinctive and menacing sophistication. The grating of the door bolt was like a sword struck to my ears. While the production is slightly more expensive than Corman's usual movies, Usher employs colourful lighting and a moody, groaning soundtrack to make up for its visual limitations. It's an effective and efficient example of gothic horror on a budget. Heard her first gasp as she awoke. Her first scream of terror. Did you know that I could hear the scratching of her fingernails on the casket lid? Number seven, The Black Cat. Supernatural, perhaps. Baloney, perhaps not. There are many things under the sun. One of the Universal's last horror movies released before the Hayes Code became strictly enforced in Hollywood, The Black Cat is an Edgar Allan Poe adaptation in name only. Director Edgar G. Ulmer famously fooled censors by adding more racy and violent content than intended so that some of his more boundary-pushing scenes would look tame by comparison. We know too much of life. We shall play a little game, Venus. A game of death, if you like. The theatrical cut was still a challenging watch for contemporary audiences. It drew big crowds despite, or maybe because of, its morbidly sexual themes, torture, and human sacrifice. The scene in which Bella Lugosi's character gets revenge on Boris Karloff's is still frequently cited as one of the scariest scenes in classic horror. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do to you now. 
tear the skin from your body. Slowly, bit by bit. Number six, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. On the surface, it's a silent movie about a fairground showman with complete control over a homicidal sleepwalker named Cesare. But with its genre-defining innovations and German expressionist style, nothing is as it seems in Dr. Caligari. Reality and physical spaces are so off-kilter that it's hard to trust anything you see on the screen. While it's not the traditional look we often associate with the genre, its use of shadows and mind-bending visuals would be copied by foundational American horror films of the 1930s. Its innovative style and creep factor would later inspire critic Roger Ebert to call it the first true horror film. Number five, The Others. How could these people be so superstitious? Grief over the death of a loved one can lead people to do the strangest things. With its spooky pale children, mysterious servants, and a haunted country house, you couldn't make a more gothic movie if you tried. It's set against the backdrop of the immediate aftermath of World War II, where a mother and her two light-sensitive children wait for their father to come home from the war. They said there was no hope. They said I should give you up for dead. They say a lot of things. Featuring a tour de force performance from Nicole Kidman, this old-fashioned ghost story found ways to innovate on the most basic horror formula. The other's enthralling narrative is replete with atmospheric images, clever jump scares, and ingenious foreshadowing that pays dividends in its final act. There is something in this house. Something diabolic. Number four, The Haunting. Don't be so cocksure of everything, Luke. A closed mind is the worst defense against the supernatural. This Shirley Jackson adaptation chronicles the experiences of a group of people participating in a study on the existence of the supernatural. Things inevitably get freaky from there. Hill House is a character in itself, with its ornate mouldings and dizzying floor plan, but its threat may be more psychological than anything else. Haven't you noticed how nothing in this house seems to move until you look away and then you just Catch something out of the corner of your eye. Are these people letting their paranoia get to them? Or is the house actively pitting them against each other? Later remakes have their own ideas, but like the novel, this paranoic and urgent haunted house movie chooses to leave most of the supernatural occurrences up to the viewer's interpretation. Number three, Rebecca. Last night, I dreamt I went to Manderley again. Alfred Hitchcock helmed the highly acclaimed 1940 film of this Daphne du Maurier story. The Best Picture winner finds a young woman marrying into a wealthy man's household, only to find the imposing memory of his first wife looms large. While some may contend it's not a horror film, Rebecca's concern with ghostly presences, real or imagined, and its twisting narrative are pretty strong stuff for a psychological thriller. I want you to get rid of all these things. These are Mrs. De Winter's things. I am Mrs. De Winter now. Whether the threat comes in the form of the devoted servant, Mrs. Danvers, or in the secrets that could turn a marriage into a nightmare, Rebecca delivers on dread. Despite its melodramatic flourishes, it's still an effective watch today. Why don't you go? Why don't you leave Manderley? He doesn't need you. He's got his memories. He doesn't love you. He wants to be alone again with her. Number two, The Innocents. Oh, miss, there's things I've seen I, I'm ashamed to say. Henry James's The Turn of the Screw recently found new life in Netflix's The Haunting of Blind Manor. But this atmospheric and spine-tingling 1961 adaptation is a beloved classic. Actor Deborah Kerr plays the governess entrusted with the care of two troubled children, who may be the target of a spiritual possession. Enter, my lord. Come from your prison. Come from your grave. 
Like many gothic stories, the movie wrings much of its horror out of its protagonist's repressed sexuality and hysteria. While it remains ambivalent about the reality of the supernatural, there's no denying its power to terrify its audiences as much as it moves them. Oh yes, miss, I'll help you. Only tell me how. Yes. We must try to learn what it is these horrors want. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. The Old Dark House. Time has been kind to this horror comedy from James Whale. If I ever went down among them, my old father and brothers, they would tell me to go away and pray. They wouldn't tell Rachel to go away and pray. <laughs> and I prayed and left them with their lustful red and white women. Sleepy Hollow. Tim Burton and Johnny Depp brought new life to the tale of the Headless Horseman. Three persons have been murdered there all within a fortnight. Each one found with the head lopped off. Lopped off? Clean as dandelion heads, apparently. Interview with the Vampire. The Vampire Lestat comes to life in this star-studded and lavishly designed production. My invitation was open to anyone, to the whore at my side, to the pimp that followed. But it was a vampire that accepted. The Orphanage. Horrors of the past converge on a woman who returns to the orphanage where she grew up. I don't know what you could have said. Como Peter Pan? Como mis nuevos amigos. Ahora tienes más de uno. Son seis. Y ellos tampoco van a crecer. Pueden crecer. The Phantom of the Opera. This Lon Chaney classic captured the thrills and magnificence of Gaston Larue's novel. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Bride of Frankenstein. To a new world of gods and monsters. <laughs> While the original terrified its audiences, Bride of Frankenstein doubled down on everything that made it unforgettable. Its gothic style is more fantastical, its body count is higher, and its humour is impossible to miss. James Well's fine-tuned ear for dark comedy and metaphor is on full and garish display in this sequel. We are friends, you and I. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Karloff's monster stalks the expressionistic countryside and haunts graveyards in his quest to find companionship in a world that fears him. With its castles lit by candlelight, social commentary and gleeful wickedness, it's a perfect example of gothic horror. Critics continue to rank it at the very top of the genre, if not the entire horror genre. Oh. You live! Go! You stay. We belong dead. Which of these haunted houses and castles would you be brave enough to spend a night in? Let us know in the comments. Hill House has stood for 90 years and might stand for 90 more. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.